Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. Uh, today we are going to be working on, uh, if you recall I mentioned I wanted to set up the building and the, the system that's going to uh, allow us to start mass producing Resonant Ender because I need a lot of it for our magic build um, as well as a few other things. And so that's what we're going to be working on today is getting that set up and started. Um, and it'll be our first kind of building in a while over on this side um, of the actual interior of the base. So, and it's gonna be our first building, I guess, within the base that's not completely built out of hardened stone. There's a little bit of hardened stone, but not much. Um, because of course, a lot of our buildings throughout this area are going to be, you know, different types of roofs and, uh, you know, in different styles of building, not just all built out of stone. So today will be our first one um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So we're going to go ahead and dive on in. Of course, I'll talk about uh, the build as we go. And I'll catch back up with you guys at the end. Okay, so we got a bit of a longer speed build today. Um, all in all, it was a little over 10 hours of footage, plus a ton of prep time and a lot of time where I stopped and took a step back and said, okay, how do I want to proceed? Uh, of course, we're going to start off with a bit of just kind of flattening out some terrain. Um, I have a what I think is going to be a pretty cool idea where this area and maybe some of the other areas of the base, but this one in particular is going to have um, a lot of variation when it comes to um, elevation. And we're going to actually end up building sort of a canal, uh, not really a canal, but like a, an open section uh, that sits a bit lower um, where there's going to be some shops and things. We're not going to be doing that today. Um, we're just going to be building this one building uh, today. Well, I say this one building, it's kind of like two buildings, uh, well one building and like a tower. We're not going to be getting the interior done, this is purely exterior today um, because it was a ton of work and there is a ton of chisels and bits um, involved with this build. So I want to do something a little bit different, of course like I said there's going to be a lot of different roof styles and materials used and stuff across the city um, as we start working on some of the some of the buildings that aren't like the big massive stone um, monument type structures you know that that make up the uh, the town so this first building since we're going to be producing resonant ender here in mass my goal was to make it sort of a like a poison uh, refining area and I say poison refining because uh, resonant ender just kind of has that dark sickly green uh, look to it. So I was thinking, well, we'll have it be kind of like a poison or alchemist type shop. Um, not really shop. It's not a shop. Um, I don't want to use that term. Um, like a, you know, where they would, like a like a guild, like where they would manufacture uh, maybe potions or, or specifically uh, specialized in poisons. So I wanted to have it be, um, as we, as we get nearer the end, um, I wanted it to be kind of messy on the outside and also kind of almost polluted, like the ground, uh, you know, wasn't healthy, the grass wasn't healthy, um, especially around the refining area, which we'll start building before too long. Uh, but right now, of course, we are just setting up the base shape, the base structures. Um, one structure is the tower, which, um, which the tower will end up having... Um, some stuff, more just decorative things, I think, um, just to kind of look like it's part of part of the the refining process for uh, the liquids that are created here. And the the building that I'm building right now is kind of like what's going to be the main structure, the main hall. Um, as of right now, there is nothing in it. You know, after finishing the speed build, there's nothing in it. Um, it will be set up to kind of look like it's part of the initial refining process. Um, or kind of like the bulk creation for um, setting up the liquid and then it's it's refined through these various um, kind of machines. Um, so basically this entire building, as of right now, the only purpose for it is mass producing resonant ender. Now there will probably be uh, some other small little steps that are added um, related to some liquid refining, maybe blazing pyrothium, angelic cryothium, stuff like that. Uh, we'll see, but right now it's just for producing resonant ender. Because, like, I could have simply did, like, a cloche, a melter, and been done. <clears throat> well, cloche, crafter, melter, with the way I have it set up. Um, but, I decided to build an entire building dedicated to this because 
First up, we've been waiting on mass production of Resident Ender for a while so we can push on into the magic build and get that, that green kind of flowing through there. And then in addition, because we have a massive city, we might as well go really, really big with small setups. Um, because, and have buildings dedicated to maybe just running like one particular thing. Um, because of the simple fact that we have to fill this whole area, right? And especially with the elevation stuff that I've got planned in this corner and possibly more, um, we're going to have lots and lots of things to build within the walls of our city. So right now we're going to build kind of a border wall. Um, I wanted a fence running around this because it wouldn't be um, something that people could just come into. Um, this is going to be one of a few structures that do have kind of a yard and um, kind of like an area around it outside of the building. Uh, we will have, of course, a lot of the wall-to-wall -wall, um, buildings, you know, where there's like buildings and shops and things that are really uh, tightly built um, in, in areas. But this one I wanted to have a fairly large area because there's a lot of outdoor refining um, because I wanted like kind of like big tanks set up where the liquid is stored and smaller tanks where the liquid would be being shipped. And then I wanted crates coming in and crates going out. Um, just a lot of crates and barrels and things like that around here because there would be liquids and materials coming in and going out uh, from this area. So I wanted to, it to feel like it was really busy and messy and cluttery um, and polluted and, and not really the grounds aren't necessarily upkept um, but very trodden and polluted um, from kind of this pollution um, that's a byproduct of this poison uh, refining so that was kind of the goal there um, we're going to start adding some piping now um, and there's going to be some piping that runs through unfortunately I've got to figure out something because the chunks um, the chunk boundaries mess with it I haven't tried breaking and replacing to get them to reconnect now that I put a weirding gadget in, maybe with it chunk loaded it won't do that, but uh, um, right now the pipes are, have been breaking off on the chunk borders, um, but I was using the pipes purely for decoration, They're, they serve no actual purpose. So far we haven't built anything with actual purpose, um, it's all just decorative, and that's the majority of it. Um, once at the end we'll go over what is actually doing something and what is purely decorative, and it is pretty much just a a couple machines that do anything and the rest is all purely decorative so um, a lot of, like I said a lot of chisels and bits you can see the walls starting to come together um, by the end of it the majority of it is affected by chisels and bits or architecture craft uh, for things like the roof um, I actually I was in the mood to play with chisels and bits so I was like you know what we're gonna go with kind of our own custom sort of waddle and daub type structure here um, the roof is, of course, a purple um, terracotta shingle type roof. Um, I decided to go with purple because, I don't know, just start breaking up the, um, you know, breaking up the hardened stone. Right now it actually, it sticks out like a sore thumb because there's so much like darker colors and hardened stone. And then we have this white and purple building, um, you know, kind of setting over here near the storage building. Um, but I think as the city comes together, I think it's going to look pretty good. Uh, and now we're going to build, of course, just our sky stone and hardened stone walls that kind of run around this. Now, I am chiseling these out. Um, as the the base progresses, we'll do more and more chisels and bits. Um, this one is just a very simple um, design, but it just kind of pushes the wall back, makes it thinner, and gives it kind of a ridge that runs around. And we'll take a closer look at that at the end. Uh, but you can see the tower right now. It's purely hollow. Um, even once we finish the build, it's hollow. But I'll end up adding something in there just so that it looks like it's part of the refining process. Maybe add something that actually does something uh, within there. We'll see. Um, but for right now, I'm just mainly working on the exterior um, before I dive too much into the interior. Um, we're not going to do any interior work today. Because, like I said, it was over 10 hours just building this thing. Well, just a footage. And it was... <laughs> I pretty much started this speed build, like, right after the other one was done and edited. I was like, okay, I'm going to start this next speed build because I had an idea. And, of course, it was New Year's week. And I hope everybody had a good New Year's. 
Um, mine actually ended up being strangely busy. We we generally celebrate New Year's, but but this year was more busy than normal, I guess. Um, my girlfriend and I had a date on New Year's Eve. Like we just kind of did a date day, and we went to Clarksville and went to the international store and went out to eat and everything. And we were gone pretty much the entire day. Um, she was like, "You want to do a date day?" I was like, "Yeah, that sounds good." And it was literally an entire day. Um, and then, let's see, the day after that was New Year's, and we celebrated New Year's, we made a big dinner and everything, and <laughs> was pretty, was busy most of the day, we ended up playing a bunch of Yahtzee, and, uh, <laughs> and then the next day, uh, what, the second, we went to my dad's for kind of a belated, uh, Christmas celebration, um, we'd spent some time with him at my grandmother's on his side's Christmas um, but then he wanted to do something um, you know later on his his actual Christmas at his house uh, was one day um, and right here by the way I'm I'm building out kind of a rounded thing but I didn't really like it so I ended up going with more of a square shape um, for the doorway there <clears throat> I know I'm just rambling about what I did over the holiday but and I didn't like the hardened stone there so I replaced it with wood I was just trying something um, but my son had to go to his uh, his biological dad's side for a week, which was horrible, you know, because it was actually really depressing dropping him off. And he was like, I don't want to go for a week. Um, and right here I am uh, doing chisels and bits for the railing to get the railing to fit how I want it to. And you can see I'm starting to bring that piping around. I'm going to start building uh, some more of our refining structure that kind of runs around. Um, I know I'm kind of rambling about real life, but that's okay. It was a, it was a busy week, though. Um, so we ended up, I, we were running for like three days straight. And, of course, I was exhausted, especially after just coming off of the Christmas running around um, for days on end. So <laughs> it was a very tiring uh, but enjoyable New Year's. So I hope everybody had a really good New Year's. And... Uh, and is is glad to be done with 2020 and coming into 2021 so um but yeah you can see the refining the refining structure there's a couple machines that will be have will have running um and i wanted to just kind of chisel these out there's not they're not super fancy but they add a lot of life um and interest into this i don't think these machines would be overly like crazy fancy or anything like that um you can see over here i'm building kind of some tanks that are going to be storing our resonant ender starting to build tanks right now they just look like big um i don't know things on the ground there um and i'm adding just a little bit of like detail stuff um these are quarks like metal textures there's a rusted one and the the, the iron plating the metal plating and the rusted metal plating or whatever um i'm just kind of using those to kind of make like what would be pipes or cables and i actually filled that uh, little refining structure that's actually liquid uranium that was you know it was ran through the melter and it creates this kind of like other like darker dingier green and so I wanted to make it feel like you know that's where the poison's starting to be refined further and then it creates um, that resonant into that refined poison uh, that's being created out here and then it's pumped up and pumped into the top of these kind of storage uh, these big storage uh, tanks that are set up here and then we're going to fill all that with resonant ender and i debated for a minute about keeping that second tank like you know only partially full but then i decided i wanted it to be fully filled and i didn't actually want the third tank there um because it just wouldn't fit in um, and i didn't really have anything i wanted to put in it we do put some other liquids um around or i think i can't remember if i got it on camera or not i did a bunch of work after um, just kind of little nitpicky things, which we'll go over, but, uh, and over there, you can see, I actually, I started building staircase down, and then I was like, no, I want to build the staircase up, actually, and that's just, I don't know that it's going to stay like that over there, uh, but that's more of a placeholder for me to remember that it's actually going to be rising up over there and not down, and now we're going to start building the walls, uh, to kind of finish out this, this larger structure that's here, just the exterior once again, as you can tell, tons of chisels and bits. Um, that was actually what made this build take so long, was just a massive amount of chisels and bits. But I'm really happy with the way it ended up turning out. 
And I'll be honest, I had a lot of fun building this, and uh, it's been a while since I've just done just an absolute ton of chisels and bits, and this was actually uh, quite a bit of fun. And it, it went pretty quick. I, none of the stuff that I built was overly elaborate or anything like that, but um, it kind of came together, I think, to form something pretty nice. Um, and now we're just bringing out the windows. I ended up going through and filling those with uh, chiseled streak, uh, streaked glass um, to kind of give some glass panes. And then we've got that kind of lattice style window as well. So a couple different window styles uh, that comprise this building. Um, and then we're going to work on the tower um, and start bringing this together and making this all look nice. Um, the kind of the tower that rises up out of the the front structure there and the tops there once again are plated and i ended up i just chiseled uh, that kind of pointed egg shape thing up there um, put a little bit of chiseled metal up there most of it most of this building is dark oak bark um, it's quark marble um, that i'm using there for the white and then it's those purple terracotta shingles, I believe it is. And, or maybe those are red. I can't remember. The colors, you know, the colors are really, really funny um, with when it comes to terracotta. And then there's a lot of that quark metal plating. It's like a super quark building. A lot of quark. So there's just a ton of quark. Um, and now I'm bringing through a path. Now, I'm not sure that it's going to stay with this disordered cobblestone. Um, and now we're going to build this little thing here. It's just basically going to be a little, like... Um, I don't know what its purpose. It's basically like cooks <laughs> cooks or heats the uh, the poisons before it goes into that refining uh, refining tank. Um, it's kind of the idea. So it's basically just a big uh, sort of boiler that we're going to be building there. You can see off in the distance I put down some cloches and wrap those with the rusty metal as well. We're going to take a closer look at those. I mean, I'm going to do a bit more with them here in a minute. But I kind of had an idea of how I wanted to do the cloches. Uh, for this area and make them kind of interesting. Um, and now we're going to build a chimney. This is built with the uh, the smoking block from Twilight Forest. Um, you know, that you tend to find around the Hydra areas. Um, I just put one of those in to start producing smoke. I've done that a few times in the past. They make great, um, you know, they work great for something like a chimney or something like that. So, um, and then we're just kind of wrapping that with a little bit of detail with the unrusted metal. So as you can see, I mean, the chisels and bits I did, just nothing fancy whatsoever, really. Um, but it just adds a lot of, like, little detail and things um, that we couldn't get otherwise, you know. Um, so over here at the cloches, we are going to do just a little bit more uh, chisels and bits. We're going to make kind of a little table um, or, or platform, not really a table, uh, that kind of comes out there. That's going to support conveyors uh, that pull things from the cloches just to add some movement and, you know, something to kind of catch your eye um, in this area. And the underneath, you'll notice I put down an infinite water source. I did go ahead and set this up because I had to, um, a lot of it I had to kind of work around and build around uh, to make it work like over in the little boiler we're going to take a closer look at it um, it's all very very straightforward like i said all it is is cloches to melter to tank um, so there's nothing really elaborate there but um, and now we're going to go through and we're going to just go ahead and add detail now this is a combination of a couple different types of coarse dirt that being silty, loamy, regular. We're also using charred dirt from the dragon nest, the fire dragon nest, as well as some gravel and some path blocks and uh, then some grass blocks. And I think that's it. And then we're also gonna use some, some of the stone paths uh, as well, just to add kind of like pebbles, lots of little rocks and bits of junk um, kind of littering this area. Um, I know I added a few things after the cut, We'll take a closer look here in a minute, um, but it was kind of stuff that I was just kind of like <laughs> digging around like, what should I add? Should I add some more like junk? Because uh, like I said, I wanted something that, that felt kind of polluted. Lots of really sickly looking dirt. Um, lots of kind of just unkept, um, you know, because I think they have bigger bigger things on their mind um, that, they're, that they're doing more important things to them. Plus lawn care really was wouldn't be a thing you know most fantasy worlds it 
shouldn't be a thing, uh, like super kept lawns, I don't think personally. Um, I tend to think of them as being very messy unless you have like a like a palace or something like that that's really upkept. Something like this would be more about just, you know, getting whatever product, you know, produced uh, that they would be producing here, in this case, poison. So, but anyways, that's it. Um, so we'll take a closer look now. Okay, so there's where we've gotten to so far. Um, which, I mean, is mostly done. I might do some more nitpicking um, and adjusting kind of the amount of kind of other blocks. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But like I said, I want it to be, to be kind of polluted and trodden in places. You can see there's a lot more, there's a lot less grass over near these machines. There's still a bit because it's not like nuclear fallout or something like that. Uh, but there's a bit less kind of the farther you get away from that. Um, not all of our buildings will be like this one, um, but this one I kind of want it to be um, a bit more messy and crazy than some of the areas that I think would be a bit more kept up. Um, but as you can see, I planted another tree here, just a spruce, just to kind of balance it out. But um, inside of here, there is nothing. There's a whole lot of nothing at the moment, but we will add some stuff uh, later on uh, to that once I figure out exactly what I want to do um, and whatnot. But uh, you can see out here, I've kind of just kind of cluttered this out. I made these little, these are basalt railings and iron lanterns uh, for decor. And there's some tanks around here. I went ahead and upgraded all of these to reinforce. I would like to upgrade them to Enderium uh, in due time, but reinforce is a little bit more uh, affordable. Um, with our current setups and these are just liquid fuel tanks I've used these in the past for decor and other packs um, kind of like just storage tanks that have been brought in uh, and kind of stored over here lots of crates I kind of mixed in some reinforced storage crates I didn't go too crazy with them because they do require a decent amount of steel uh, most of it's just wooden storage crates um, and then I've used some chiseled fluid bit tanks for um, adding in a little bit of other fluids um, for decoration. There's some resin ender back there, a weirding gadget, um, but just lots of little clutter around. Now this right here, um, we actually have a pipe. This is a conduit facade. There's kind of like a rock that's sitting there. And then it comes up and it pumps into these three tanks here, uh, creating resin ender. So we've actually created a decent amount uh, already, just in the time that I was doing other stuff. So. It just kind of splits off between these tanks and once these tanks start filling up i'll remove them and switch them out with some of these other tanks that are more for decoration uh kind of scattered around um honestly i don't know that i like this double stacked one so i may just pull this off and put this down like yeah right there um i double stacked them but i wasn't really liking that um, and then there is our big uh, kind of resonant tanks, decorative tanks, uh, setting there. And so the idea is, and don't touch that, that's heavy, that's HV wire uh, that runs through there. Um, basically, it's pulling uh, from an HV capacitor, and underneath this is a flux point that's pulling the power uh, up and out. And the idea is, like, the refining process would start kind of in here, uh, sort of thing, where things are loaded into the fluid pipes, which are then sent up. Uh, into this tower which would have another step of refining uh, within this and then it would come out um, over here and go into this sort of boiler thing um, and actually our melter is tucked into here you can see it's actually melting uh, some resonant ender and then um, it would get pumped out into this um, in this state where it would then get refined into this state uh, now the way this all works is we have these cloches set up here. There is a infinite water source down below that's feeding these with water. Power, of course, coming from over there to that in the crafter. Um, and then the items, of course, are pulled out by these conveyors, which are then sent over to this tier one crafter. Um, originally, I was going to go with ender lilies. I actually had it originally set up with ender lilies, um, and it was set up a little bit different. There was actually two of these frame drawers and, and whatnot, but... Ender lilies um, are extremely, extremely slow in the garden cloche, so I had to go make a solium dagger 
um, and go hunt Enderman and get some Enderman chunks and then spread these seeds out. It wasn't too bad, um, in all honesty. Originally, I was thinking about doing this setup as an episode, but it's so simple uh, that I felt like it was a waste uh, to even really spend any time, honestly, covering it. So it pumps over into this crafter, uh, which then takes the Enderman es essence and crafts it into Ender Pearls, which are then piped out by an item duct into this frame drawer, which underneath this is a item conduit line uh, pulling that out and it's going all the way over to the melter um, and then the melter of course is melting it down and then that's getting pumped out over to these tanks so the melter I don't know if there's a really good place honestly to uh, have a peek inside of here I guess I could pull up right there uh, but you can see that's the piping so it all just runs up there and there's a flux point uh, setting right below it there um, so the melter's staying stocked on energy, interpearls coming in, fluid coming out, um, and that's really all that this whole building is doing at the moment. So it looks like there's a lot going on, but that's really it. Um, it's mostly just decorative. So very, very straightforward, simple setup. Uh, I mean, you could honestly have this, the crafter, the item duct pumping out to the melter, and then that pumping into a tank. It could be, um, as small as this, really, so... But it, it needed it needed an entire building uh, for that. But like I said, we probably will do a couple other fluids in this area um, and maybe have them stored uh, up inside of this building or something like that. Um, maybe they would be... Ooh, I died. I haven't died in so long. <laughs> that was like 300 levels or something crazy like that. And I lost my food buff. That's fine. We'll get it back. There we go. There's our food buff back. This stuff is great for that. Um, <laughs> I haven't died in so long. I was just seeing how long my levels could go. And of course, HV wire. Of course, you can't insulate that wire. Um, and I went with HV just because we are moving a decent amount of power probably with the garden cloches because I know they do consume a lot. Um, but I think for this setup, we haven't used, we tried using cloches before, you know. Um, we already had these crafted up and just sitting around because uh, we ended up scrapping it for... They were in that building over there, of course. So that's pretty much the building. I, like I said, a lot of chisels and bits uh, through this. And I may make some small tweaks. I may put something on the front of this and maybe do something with the underbelly. Um, but I don't know. I think it's I think it's fine. And then we'll work. We'll do some stuff on the interior probably. Um, and the tower before too long, um, I hope. Um, and then this all needs to get brought down. I need to flatten it. And then we're going to have kind of an area underneath this. That's why this is going up. I don't know that it's really going to be shaped this way uh, necessarily. But uh, yeah, and then we're going to dig this out and kind of have this like um, this area. And I, I was kind of, whenever I was thinking about it, I was kind of thinking it's not necessarily going to be like the, um, it's not necessarily going to be like that, but I was kind of thinking of the little area in that one town in Skyrim. Is it Riften? Where it kind of goes down. It's like there, it's like a waterway, and there's like docks, and there's like some stuff underneath uh, down there. But I was kind of thinking of having uh, not necessarily a waterway, even though we could. We could do a little waterway that feeds out to here. Um, but I'm thinking more of just having an area down there. Um, so where it goes down, you know, maybe say 10 blocks or something like that. Um, and staircases that go down to that. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But um, we'll tackle that in due time. I think next episode, though, we are going to be working over in the long forgotten magic area. I want to get back over here now that we have Resonant Ender so we can start filling um, these channels that run through here um, and then getting those finished out, getting them covered with the glass. Um, after we do that and kind of start doing some stuff over here um, after that maybe um, maybe another speed build video I'd like to do another speed build video I'd actually like to get down here and start working on uh, shaping this up bringing it up because there's still a ton of work that needs to be done over here um, so I'd like to get over to that I think next episode I've been wanting to get back over here really really bad and before too long, I'd like to push for the Draconic Energy Orb, maybe? I don't know um, for sure what all that is going to entail, but um, maybe start pushing towards that and pushing Blood Magic and stuff. Um, 
But I stopped working over here because I was dead set. I needed my resident ender uh, for this area. So we'll be able to do that next episode. So I think that's the plan for next episode, I do believe. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. It took a lot of time. Um, there wasn't a lot of videos this week, this past week. Uh, this was actually originally intended for like a Friday or Saturday release. But um, due to me being busy and due to this just taking a long time to do, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. Really, really quick, I wanted to just show you uh, that a little bit closer because that's how I, I did that. Uh, that's all chisels and bits. Nothing too fancy, but I just wanted to point that out before we ended out. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.